Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas here at Casa de Sauland, as he calls it, with the man himself, Nissa. How are you, mate? Doing very well, mate. Doing very well. Good, good. Um, happy New Year, of course. Um, I think the question everyone wants to know is how big was the New Year's Eve party? I had um, me and the fa- <laughs> it was not big at all. Not. Me and the family. What a letdown that is, yeah, by the way. I was waiting for like a mad Dan Bilzerian yeah. style story, but. I wish, I wish, I wish I could give you better stories. We all had COVID. <laughs> so we were all indoors. I think we managed to stay up and watch the uh, fireworks on TV, which is quite nice. And then, um, yeah, bed, bed and sweating in bed. That was just a cover story. What really happened, we can't say on yeah, IFL yeah. TV. Um, but yeah, obviously in January and January without boxing, normally there's little, if any, boxing in January. But uh, I don't know, I kind of don't like it it's weird I feel like I haven't been to a show in ages even though it's only been like a few weeks yeah I mean you'd you'd think that we'd be well we would have been playing a bit of catch up because obviously there's been such a there's such been a lag with the Covid and the restrictions but yeah I mean we we had Jan 29th planned um, with uh, Eubank Williams but that's going ahead now on Feb 5th so just very happy that's going ahead and that's a good start to the boxing calendar, I think. And, you know, hopefully it all goes on and, and stays positive from there and on out. We will talk about Eubank Williams, but I think there is only one place to start. Um, the big question, is it a real tattoo on Maris Breedis? I'm not sure. You're going to have to ask him. I can get you an interview of him yeah. and you're going to have to ask him. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting marketing tactic. Um, I think I think Marius is definitely um, you know he's definitely got more popular over here and uh, amongst well popular maybe yeah um, more like people know his name uh, people are obviously a bit upset with uh, the fact that he's uh, he's been chasing uh, Jake Paul or was it Logan Jake 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 um, around you know for a fight you know I've said to you I look you know the guy the the end. It's a, it's a bit bit of marketing. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, you have to respect him. I think he's a, a three time world champion. He's got he had all the belts pretty much. Uh, he won the Ali Trophy, and you know he's he's the best cruiserweight in the world. And um, well, he's he 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 gave Usyk his best fight. He almost beat Usyk. I had it down to the last round, and and Usyk won it just about. So do you think this would be kind of perceived differently if it was a cruiserweight who hadn't achieved what Maris Breedis has achieved? Do you think it would be perceived differently, this whole sort of tattoo tactic? Yeah, I think, look, if it was, let's say, um, a, a Coley, you know, and I, I mean this with the greatest respect, he's not been around for that long. I think if someone, you know, who just won a world title, they were doing it, then it would be, be perceived a little bit differently. Um, I think... <laughs> You can't really argue with uh, Bradis' talent, his resume, um, and he's he's never backed down from a fight, and he's one of the bravest warriors out there. Um, and I think you know, this this actually adds a bit bit more spice to the Ockley fight <laughs> if it happens. Um, people want to see Ockley beat, or UK people want to see um, Ockley uh, Ockley sorry beat um, Bradis. And um, Latvians, you know, it actually creates something now, creates a dynamic. Uh, I'm not sure if it was really there before. Um, so, yeah, it gives, it gives a bit of a narrative. Can you see why there would be fans who would be like, look, Akoli has been very open about how willing he is to take this fight. Um, you and Matram, you know, it's, it's a good working relationship. There's no reason why this shouldn't happen. And I know there's other belt holders at Cruiserweight, but... This is kind of the fight that people want to see the most because it will determine who is the number one cruiserweight, people believe. So can you see why people might be like, it's just kind of, it's, it's a bit frustrating to see that from Breeders? No, no, no. I, I get that totally. No, I, I understand it. It's, look, it's it's very easy as well when you're sitting at home and sort of writing comments or tweets on uh, Twitter about stuff. Um I understand that fans make the sport, and you know opinions are important. Um, I think it's a fight that has to happen. I think that Akoli's a very, very good fighter. I think Brady's a very good fighter, and um, I, I know that okay, he's fighting um, end of Feb, I think, uh, against um, the Polish opponent. Cizlak. 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 So I can never say his name. 
And um, I know that Myris is going to have a mandatory, so that's another reason that he's not been, you know, that, that's been another issue in the uh, negotiations. But let's say they come, they, they should both come through that and let's do a summer fight between Ocoli and, uh, and Bradis. That'd be, you know, what, what a fight. In terms of uh, Jake Paul just moving away from um, Bredis and the tattoo and whatnot, has your perception changed from him at all? I'll take it back to, let's say, uh, January 2020, his professional debut, as it were. Um, I was there in Miami, fought another YouTuber, but it was considered a professional fight, sanctioned and whatnot. Has your perception in these two years of Jake Paul changed, be it as a businessman, a showman, or even as a fighter, has your perception changed of Jake Paul in those two years? Um, I think that, you know, I, I think my perception as a businessman, I think he's a great businessman. I think he's a great marketeer. Um, <clears throat> I think that just because you get a fight sanctioned under a, a pro license doesn't make it a pro fight, in my opinion. I, you know, I know people who go, oh, well, we got it sanctioned by God knows where. I, I just don't see it as a pro fight. I think you need to do it. I think you need to have a few amateur fights. Um, you know, go get your book, go out and fight on on the on the amateur scene. Um, I I don't think you get he'd have gotten a license in this country. I don't I don't think. Um, I'm not sure where he got his license, but at the same time, look, I I can't knock what he's done. I just think I think that any um, boxer would 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 beat him at any decent boxer. I think I don't think he could I think that Clarissa Shields would probably beat him. Uh, I think we Chris Christina Hammer, uh, who signed to us, you know, but I'm talking about strong, you know, the what they said about sixty nine kg, whatever, seventy two they the, a female would have a good chance against him. Uh, I don't think Jake Paul would would have a chance against a Clarissa Shields or or a, or a Christina Ham or a Savannah Marshall, for that instance as well. Um, but anyway, that's my controversial input. I better stop there. Get into a whole new topic of uh, equality and whatever else. I don't I don't want to do a women's against man's fight because that could go awfully wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it would be competitive. Clarissa Shields and. Jake Paul, Christina Hammer, and Jake Paul. I do know that Clarissa and her, her management, uh, 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 Mark Caffet, um, I know that I know that they'd like to fight fight a man, and yeah, I mean, why not? Why not? I, I again, I, 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 it's a route we don't need to go down I'm for sort now. Of thinking is it? about it now, <laughs> <laughs> the wheels are turning in my head very slowly because it's late on a Friday. Um, uh, yeah, it could also be very dangerous, um, you know, I, and and obviously, you know, Jake Paul's probably stronger physically. I just, I'm just saying that um, boxer wise, a Clarissa Shields or, or Savannah Marshall or Christina Hammer are better than him. Um, I would say that. Um, what did he weigh for his last fight? I don't know the exact weight. I'm not going to lie, but. Um... It was like a yeah. It was like a low cruiser, so big what? light heavy sort of sort so of weight. Yeah, eighty five ish. Okay, uh, I would say he wouldn't have a chance against. Um, would he win a British title, for example? I was about to say. Okay, so you put him in cruiser weight. Would he have a chance against Dion Juma? No. Would he have a chance against Mikel Lowell? No. Would he have a chance against? I'm not. I'm not that's so I'm going domestic now. Would he have a chance against um, uh, any of the other guys? I, I, you know, Billum Smith, no. Uh, uh, the React Paul, no. Um, uh, you know, all these guys, Isaac Chamberlain, no. So that I'm, I'm, Do you consider him a professional boxer then? Because we're talking about well, these sort of domestic level guys and you said you don't count no, his saying, first fight as a fight. Like, Do you consider him as, I think he's what, 5-0 and o now? Do you consider him as a 5-0 and o professional or not? No, 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 no. no. No, I don't. I think it's a different market. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm torn with the whole sort of. You know, I, I think he's a he's a strong guy. I just think you need to. You can't just suddenly jump into to, to professional boxing. It's just a different level. You know, I've tried to do white collar mm. fights, and um, it's not even the getting in the ring that gets you. It's the it's the training which. <laughs> ends up killing you you know like I don't know how these guys do it and then I, I just 
I think you need to, to, to serve your time a little bit yeah. and you can't just jump in and, and say you're a pro boxer. I think that's a bit insulting to some of these guys who've been working towards it their whole lives. Um, you know, I look for Fraser Clark, who was in the amateur team for God knows how long, and, and you know now he's finally getting there, which has always been his dream. And you've got some guy who's, cause he's got good following on YouTube or whatever, he's, and he's a genius marketeer, and he's a genius businessman, and he's, you know, he talks well, and he's being able to, it's a bit unfair on these guys who've, you know, they've, they've, they've worked for it a lot harder. I think, look, Jake's worked for it in a different way, as in I'm not knocking any of this YouTube or, or TikTok or whatever, whatever it's you're, grind, it's yeah. just a different grind. Exactly, exactly. So look, he's 5 and own now, as you say, as a pro. I'd like to see him fight a proper boxer. Um, I think Chavez is too small. If you're saying that he's around the 80, well, maybe not. But he wasn't, what was he, middleweight, wasn't he? When he was decent-ish. So it's, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see him fight, fight Tommy Fury. You know, that's a similar weight as well, because Tommy Fury's quite a big, light, heavy, isn't he? That, that's beat Tommy Fury. And then we can, then, I, then I'll definitely, I'll reconsider. Yeah, that's a hurdle. Obviously, we still haven't crossed with the whole Tommy Fury thing. Just in terms of, um, theoretically, let's say Jake Paul was open to fighting a boxer. Would he pick someone like Maris Breedis anyway? Because you look at the people he's picked so far, he's picked UFC fighters who, in America, UFC is like a, a different kettle of fish over here. People like uh, Masvidal, who he's calling out now, and people like um, the man he just beat, whose name I've completely lost. Um, uh, Tyron Woodley, that's the one, yeah. yeah. They're, in America, they're just such names that someone like Maris Breedis, does that transcend to America? Is this even a possibility, realistically, or, or is this sort of... Not, I don't want to call it a PR stunt, but is this really like a possibility? Um, I think, you know, if anything, his matchmaking so far has been, you know, pretty genius, um, if you look at it. So I think, <laughs> you know, unless they sack the matchmaker and get someone else in who's completely mad... Um, I can't see them fighting uh, Maris Bradis. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a suicide mission for him. I, I just, you know, like I said, fight someone, like, you know, a five, uh, four and oh, five and five oh, Tommy Fury, same sort of size, you know, proper boxer. If you can beat him, which I personally, I don't think he can, then maybe, you know, build him up a bit. But I, just, I, I don't, unless they're completely mad, no. <laughs> I've got to be honest, you know, I, I think, well, Maris, I think, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can't see it happening. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's some people who would like to see Maris fight Jake for, for other reasons, perhaps anti-Jake Paul reasons, but, uh, but I think people should be cheering him a little bit to get the fight, because I think he'd do a lot of people a favour. But I think it, unless uh, Jake Paul has a very unsane uh, or insane moment, I, I can't see it happening. Obviously, the one thing we do want at the end of this is, like you said, Breedis and Akoli. If it happens in the summer, obviously Akoli comes through um, February the 27th and Breedis deals with the mandatory. Um, we get a summer fight, which I suppose now is bigger and uh, Eddie threw the word embarrassing at Breedis as well. So we've got a little bit of uh, little bit of bait chucked in as well. So I don't know, it's an interesting one for the summer now. Is it doubled in size? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it embarrassing. I mean, it's just uh, you know someone trying to get a good payday and and get his name out there. And you I can't knock a man a payday, I suppose, can you? No, and I think you know Eddie. Eddie's Eddie's the you know he, he he's a good talker as well. So you know they're promoting themselves, and it's uh, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to discuss that. Um, I think that Bradis, yes, Akoli against Bradis in the, in the summer would be a brilliant fight for either. He, I don't know how well Akoli does in the UK. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't. We could do that in. From in, in, a numbers perspective, you sort of yeah, like it's ticket sales, whatever else. Um, I'm. I, I think you'd fill up twenty thousand in in Latvia, no problem. Great weekend away uh, for any uh, British male. Um, and you know, it's it's, it's yeah. It's, I mean. It, you can't really. I, I, I don't think you do as good numbers as ticket sales in the UK. I think you do better in in, in Latvia. 
Well, it's a discussion for if they both come over their hurdles and fingers crossed we do get it because it is, well, for me, it's one of the fights that I would put down as one of my top five for, for 2022. Um, moving on, finally, someone has accepted the IBF Eliminator. Yeah. We stood there in Vegas beforehand thinking, right, if Hergovic does a job, are we going to be in the same place again? Names are going to be thrown and they're going to be turned down. Um, or oh, sorry, Hergovic's name will be thrown at people and it will be turned down. But Tony Yoka is the man that uh, has accepted the Eliminator. Yeah, he's accepted. Um, I just hope something comes of it. You know, it's a it's a very exciting fight. Um, you know, to to they've got history from the Olympics. Um, I think it was a very close decision at the Olympics. It could have could have gone Phillips' way, and I don't think anyone would have argued. Um, I mean, they fought a couple of times in the in the, in the amateurs, and I think Yoka's a bit of a star in France. Um, Philip's obviously a bit of a star in Croatia, but I think internationally it's going to help them both as well. Um, you know, to, to push them, push them internationally. Not sure where the fight will end up. I know there's a lot of interest, interested parties to put it on. Uh, I know that Yoka is also. I mean, you know, Yoka was due to fight Bacoli, so that's also another interesting situation. We're not exactly. I thought it was rescheduled. We're not sure. We have to sort of wait on the outcome of that. Um, but it's a great fight. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, we, I mean, that's probably our biggest sort of hit in a while on, on like, uh, on social media, the amount of people who are interested. And actually, uh, English people, like a lot of English people interested in that fight, uh, which shows how big it is. It shows how big it is, yeah. Um, in terms of that fight, and you said, you know, it's been accepted and you hope it, it's going to go further. What sort of, Talk us through the stage right now, because obviously we've been told it's been accepted. What sort of work has to go on between there and then? Is there a lot of work to be done? Because I think a lot of people are taking it as he's accepted it. We're now going to see that fight in two months. It's obviously, I, I imagine it's not it's not that simple. I mean, you saw what happened with um, Michael Hunter. Uh, it's where boxing can be very frustrating. You know, you do a two week negotiation period, no agreement. Then there's two weeks, and you got a purse bid. Purse bid gets one. Contracts get sent out. You wait two weeks. The guy didn't sign the contract. You know, like, okay, great. So we've got to go back to the drawing board again. That's six weeks of someone's earning life, and, and and as a fighter, you have a window. You know, so it's it's. it's look, I hope they they've got the right intentions, and I think they do. I think uh, it'll be a great fight, and I think there's like I said, there's a interested a few interested parties in staging it. Yeah. I saw Tyson Fury put on his story as well that he basically tagged Tony Yoka and Philip Hergovich and said, look, this is a fight I want to see. So when you've got one of the world heavyweight champions saying it's one they want to see because the winner of that is then what Usyk's mandatory. Um, so realistically, the winner of that is in for you know, a mega fight and is in the mix with the likes of Fury who said himself that he wants to see the fight. Yeah, I mean, when, when, the, when, when the best heavyweight on the planet says that, um, it's always a compliment and uh, sort of a, 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 an approval stamp. Yeah. Um, it's always nice to see, and um, you know we're we're all big fans of Tyson, and um, you yeah, know just do you know what the heavyweight world is so much better with him back in it. I'm I'm very glad he's back and firing on all cylinders. Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's exactly it, the, the, you can't really eclipse the the, the heavyweight lineal champ uh, giving you uh, kudos for it for the fight. So let's just hope it happens. Eubank Williams, um, you said at the start that we've. Well, everyone would have seen now we've got February the 5th as the sort of approved date. I saw something on um, online a couple of days ago. I think it was one of like the Welsh sporting ministers who said that he, there could be trouble with it potentially happening in Wales, even if it was moved to February. Um, I'm just wondering if you had any sort of trouble around that potentially being rescheduled for early Feb. At all. No, there's been an announcement today uh, by our old mate. I can't remember his name, but he's uh, he's put a... Professor, uh, someone or other, and he said that they're allowed to go ahead with big events. I, I think I think a lot comes down to the rugby as well and the the Six Nations. Um, they were going to have a big big uproar if they if if the RFU started moving the uh, Welsh rugby games to England. You know that's that can't happen. Yeah, um, I know nothing about rugby, and even I know that that wouldn't go yeah, down well. No, I, I have no idea about rugby either, but it's. Um, 
yeah, no, I, I think there would be a big uproar. And also the Liam Williams, look, people need to earn money. Yeah, you, 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 you need people in the bars, you need, you need people in the pubs, um, and, and you need live events going on. Um, I'm not going to start getting into Corona. I, I don't, you know, but, but life has to go on a bit. I don't. I don't really care if someone gets the jab or doesn't get the jab. Or I don't get into this. Just let's live life and go to events and have fun. And you know, people need to be out spending money. Be careful, obviously, but at the same time, you know, the world has to go on. Sadly, yeah. do you think this is where boxing sometimes gets the the disrespect at times? Because you're looking at someone who is Wales or Welsh's main face in boxing and he's fighting Chris Eubank who is a massive name not just here but worldwide the Eubank name carries so much weight and yet they're looking at I know rugby is the Welsh sport but they're looking at that in terms of if that goes ahead then the boxing world do you think this is where boxing gets sometimes disrespect because I'm not being funny that is the biggest fight in Wales involving a Welshman since since I can remember yeah I think since uh, Joe or Enzo um, trying to think if there's anyone else, Selby's, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's massive. Um, I think, I think, you know, in that instance, you've got the RFU, the proper rugby union, and they, you know, maybe a bit more of a affiliate sort of organisation. We, we, you know, we're boxing fights. We do event to event. Um, so I think that is maybe not the disrespect we think for boxing. It's more, maybe it's more because it's a. It's an official, you know, the RFU's it's the national team. It's like the, the Free Lions for England. <clears throat> um, so it's, I think it's a little bit different there. But yeah, I agree. I, I, you know, I was, a, I was a bit upset that we got moved from the 29th of, of January. Uh, you know, a week, come on. Yeah. Anyway, look, I'm just happy it's on. I'm just happy it's on. And I think, that's just, like I said earlier, that's a, it's a seriously good way to kick off the new year. And, um, you know, a real 50-50 fight and um, all action. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, one thing I did want to ask you about, because I don't think why well, I asked you if you've been asked about it. Just your thoughts on um, Calm Brook. We're closing in um, about, what, just over a month away till we finally see them in the ring. In terms of the fight, n not the inside the ring stuff, but in terms of the weight the fight holds, I just want to know if you think potentially from where it would have been even three, five, seven years ago, whatever, from then to now, does it still hold that same sort of weight for you as a boxing fan? That's a good question. Um, does it hold the same weight? I, I mean, I try and sort of keep everything in front of me and not sort of speculate on the on the past, but probably not. Um I think that's a general consensus. It would have been better then, but it's still good to see now. Is it still a 50-50-ish sort of fight? Yes. Are they still big-ish stars? Yes. Will I pay to watch it? Yes. Um, could I bet my house on the winner? No. I, you know, I think it's got all the ingredients for a great fight. Of course, it's always a shame when the fights don't happen at that time, like a Mayweather or a Mayweather-Pacquiao um, but we have to live with what we got in front of us. So, if you don't like it, don't buy it. It's quite simple. Keep your money. Go and do something else with it. Watch it in a week's time. Or you know, I I think people are too critical. There are reasons why these don't these fights don't happen. I know it's frustrating as boxing fans. I do. I'm a boxing fan first and foremost. But sometimes the you know, you can't force someone to fight. <laughs> you can't force someone to agree on a weight. You can't force someone to be with a certain broadcaster. What are you going to do? It's it's happening now. Everyone should be happy. Or not everyone. Everyone who wanted the fight. And the people who don't want to watch it, just don't watch it. Easy. All right. Mrs. Howland, thank you very much for having me around in the hospitality. I've got, got my gin and tonic as well to finish off, made by your lovely wife. Which is the best gin and tonic I've ever had, by the way. And I'm not just... Being a kiss, I'll see you. Um, Don't, yeah. Don't give out my address. Don't give out my address. I'll try not to. Um, address in the description, by the way. Uh, one more thing. Have you got sort of a message for perhaps boxing fans for 2022? Um, obviously, you said you don't want to go into Corona and that, and we don't need to, but I feel like this could be the first year for a couple of years where it's going to be flat out, steady, no hurdles. Boxing, have you got sort of a message to the fans? 
I think you know in in, in these times with this you know corona it's, it's it's been frustrating I think everyone just needs to stay positive I just hope that you know all the fights that need to get made get made I hope the fighters make the money that they're due to make I hope they all stay healthy I hope there's no bad injuries and I hope that everyone I, I hope I hope it's a good year for everyone I think everyone needs it um there's a few fights that I want to see uh, domestically in the UK, internationally, and um, yeah, I'm excited for the year. Oh, mic drop.